Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this relatively recent paper that tries to tackle a somewhat important mystery when it comes to the evolution of galaxies, but I guess more importantly, how the central black holes in many galaxies evolve as well. With the question here being, how exactly do some black holes get so extremely massive and are able to actually absorb so much mass all at once? And what forces play the most role in both evolving various galaxies and also evolving various black holes in the middle of such galaxies? With the hints coming from the recent paper suggesting that, just like a lot of scientists suspected, the magnetic forces in various galaxies seem to play an extremely important role. So in other words, what we're going to be discussing can be referred to as the extragalactic magnetism, the type of magnetism we generally suspect exists everywhere in the universe, but it's also relatively difficult to see it. But in a recent study using an extremely important and somewhat cool telescope known as SOFIA, the team behind the paper in the description below was able to investigate a somewhat well-known galaxy and was able to create this very impressive image showing us the magnetic lines that all seem to go into the central black hole, implying of course that the magnetic fields seem to be feeding this black hole. But let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, starting with the telescope itself. The telescope known as Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, also known as SOFIA. The 2.7 meter reflector telescope built into an actual airplane, with the mission itself being run by NASA and the German Aerospace Center, that in the last few years has been able to achieve quite a lot and has actually been able to discover a lot of things other telescopes have not been able to see. Mostly because, well, first of all, you can actually relocate this telescope pretty much anywhere in the world, but also because it sort of operates way above most of the atmosphere. Allowing this observatory to discover a lot of different really impressive things, including, for example, the atmosphere of Pluto that was detected by this telescope back in 2015. With SOFIA being the successor to NASA's Kuiper Airborne Observatory that operated for about two decades starting in 1974. And because of its successes, NASA scientists decided to make something even better, which eventually resulted in the completion of SOFIA, which still operates even today, making this one of the coolest and one of the most powerful observatories on the planet. And because SOFIA is able to operate way above most of the atmosphere, just like the James Webb telescope, it's also able to detect a lot of the infrared light that would be otherwise mostly invisible to a lot of other telescopes. And that's because most of the infrared light coming from distant objects is generally absorbed by Earth's atmosphere. So flying above the atmosphere is one of the ways we can usually see all of this. And when it comes to space observations, one of the main strengths of SOFIA as an observatory is its ability to look at various magnetic fields in extremely dense areas of the universe, specifically looking at various cosmic clouds or concentrations of gas, in order to then reveal various magnetic lines and the magnetic fields present in these regions. And so the scientists behind the study decided to focus on a very well-known concentration of gas located in the middle of the galaxy you see right here, NGC 1097, also known as Coldwell 67 a beautiful spiral galaxy approximately 45 million light years away from us that's already known to possess a lot of really interesting features, and it's also known to be somewhat active, it's what's known as a Cipher galaxy, which basically means that it has a somewhat active galactic nucleus on the inside. For example, it's one of the very few well-known galaxies to us that possesses four optical jets that seem to come from the nucleus on the inside. It's kind of difficult to see it here, but the jets do become quite clear once you remove a lot of the other stars from the picture. And though originally some of the scientists thought that this is maybe astrophysical jets, in reality this seems to be an example of four different tidal tails, most likely from the interaction with ancient galaxies. And that's because in this case the tails are composed of stars and some gas, as opposed to fast-moving particles, which is what we usually detect in the middle of various astrophysical jets. But naturally, because this is an active galaxy, there also has to be some kind of a massive black hole on the inside. And in this case, it seems to possess a black hole that's approximately 140 million times the mass of our Sun. Or something that's over 30 times more massive than the one in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy. But more interestingly is this unusual, very dense ring that seems to be located in the middle of the galaxy as well. The ring that's roughly around 5,000 light years across, and that seems to represent an independent structure, 
from the rest of the galaxy, including the spiral arms that stretch across. And so one of the main questions that the scientists were trying to figure out in this case is what exactly made this ring and how is it that it's actually able to even be there? With the scientists behind this paper having a hunch that it could be something to do with the extremely powerful magnetic field that seems to guide a lot of matter in this galaxy. And so the scientists in this case conducted a lot of radio polarimetric observations by using Sophia's very powerful telescope and by looking at this galaxy for a pretty long time. In the process discovering that there is a pretty big difference in the magnetic fields between the central region of the galaxy and the outskirts of the galaxy, the magnetic field very close to the black hole seemed to be really, really strong. With Sophia telescope eventually revealing that the magnetic field seems to feed a lot of matter into the starburst ring, allowing it to form and to grow larger. But further radio polarimetric observations also show that after this, the magnetic lines seem to spiral right into the center, feeding the supermassive black hole as well. Implying, of course, that at least in this case, the gravity alone cannot explain the existence of the ring or the really, really massive black hole in the center. The actual feeding mechanism seems to involve very powerful magnetic lines formed in this galaxy. And that shouldn't really come as a surprise, mostly because we've seen this many times around, well, actually smaller examples. And not just examples from various small black holes where magnetic fields play a role, but also examples from various very young stars, including stars that are very similar to our Sun. For example, stars like Tetori stars, which normally have very powerful magnetic fields responsible for making the star grow larger and larger in size. You can actually learn a little bit more about this from one of the older videos on the channel that should also be in the description below. And so just like the magnetic lines in various star systems, the powerful magnetic lines in NGC 1097 galaxy seem to follow the shape of the spiral arms and seem to guide the matter all along the galaxy all the way to the center, but also stopping in the innermost region where the ring is formed, forming this beautiful shape you see right here. Which actually makes it a pretty exciting discovery. First of all, it actually helps the scientists figure out where some of these other rings around other galaxies might come from as well. For example, it could actually help us solve the mystery of these ring galaxies that we've detected many times before, such as the iconic Hoag's object you see right here, whose origin is still not really well understood. On the other hand, it also helps us figure out how some black holes, central black holes, can get so extremely massive. There is actually still no good explanation for why some galaxies seem to have black holes that are billions and billions masses of the sun in mass. It just doesn't make sense how they could grow so quick and how they could become so massive. And so if the magnetic fields could become very powerful in certain galaxies, it could maybe provide certain explanations. And so this is definitely a pretty interesting discovery and a pretty interesting study. But I guess to try to figure out what exactly happens in these galaxies, and more importantly, how they're able to have these powerful magnetic fields, that's actually not a question we can answer yet until the scientists discover more such galaxies and until we can find a way to potentially trace all of this across very large regions of space and maybe even connect all of this into a much bigger picture. At the moment, this is still very localized and so it's not really clear what the origin of all of this is. Nevertheless, a super exciting discovery and a really interesting study. But I guess until we discover something else, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.